So I'm going to do it mostly as a review and then highlight what they have on this, uh, as you can see. Jabber Jaws. Oh, no. Sorry, I scheduled that. I don't, yeah, I was I don't asking feel like wrong, getting screwed sorry. over. So we were oh, like, I don't want, you don't, you, you can't just schedule without chatting about it. No, it's comparison. What? There's comparison, but I don't appreciate being, um, I don't, the, 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 you know what the beautiful thing about this next semester for you guys is I don't have to see you. <laughs> hey. I'll see I'm you. I'm all your classes. I'm throwing my schedule out the window. I'm just like, you, well, everybody, talk about how that one class that walks by when we're in Fizz likes you more. But I think if you like us more, we would like you more than that class. If you always talk I, about I, us. Don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> It's, it's, they're, they're new. I have to be nice to them. I don't remember you being nice to us, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm not supposed to, I'm supposed to be tough on you. Difficult. But they're play, they're incoming freshmen or they're, 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 they're not even freshmen. done with their first year. Yeah. Are they, they, they need to be green. Green. Yes. Green. They're, green. they're, they're green. wait, green. I, Shemika will do it anyway. They're going to get into the nursing and it's going to be all over for them. Now, but I don't know, what do you guys take next term? What are you taking the fall? Uh, I, ecology, for right. me, ecology, botany, yeah. um, usual stuff, animal behavior, and then I got like two honors courses. Yeah, well, the animal behavior is interesting, at least. I think I think that students really like that. Is there a lab with that, or is that there just... There is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting class. But everybody ends up taking botany and environmental science and get into... The, the, the science things, and, and I basically don't see a whole lot, comparatively speaking. We're going to make sure to stop by. Though. It's I have an odd schedule because I just have the advanced students for anatomy, and then I've got, and surprisingly, I'm on Tuesday, Thursday, I've got a, it, 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 everything changed. Dr. Robbins is no longer administrative entirely, so he's had to take more classes. Uh, Dean Kalovich, no longer the dean, she's coming back, she's going to do all the micro. So it means for me is we basically pick up, I, I, I was typically not here Tuesday, Thursdays. I have a Tuesday, Thursday, AP2 lecture, a Tuesday, AP2 lab, another lab Wednesdays, as well as the advanced anatomy. So it, 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 the dynamic has changed because of the, and a lot of it's the enrollment aspect of things that have played a role in this. And, and so our adjuncts are going to be teaching a lot less. Comparatively, when I first started here full time, I all, I told was the labs, a lot. I took like five labs typically. They didn't trust me doing lectures. I don't blame them. I didn't trust them. First, I don't listen to your audio on YouTube. Whenever right. you blow up to become a famous YouTuber, you know they'll know they got money on their hands. You know. Oh, really? I'm that good. Yeah. I I don't think so. I mean, I'm just I'm saying I whenever I watch your reviews and everything. I, I, I enjoy myself. It's fun. To I, to, uh, I'm not having fun. Why would anybody else? Yeah, I love the timestamps you throw in there sometimes. You know, like you're watching stuff. Like the one time that you were watching the soccer game, and we had like uh, first half, like second half, and there's like videos recording, like first out in between, and you'd be like, oh, someone scored or this or that. I do that. Was... I'll be doing that today. But see, I, it's very hard for me because you know, it, there's no Casemiro for Man United, and that's a problem. Oh, okay. He's suspended for a couple more games, and he's if he's there, they win. If he's not there, they don't. Win. They're playing a good team. The only the, only at home. I can't even. I'm not surprised Doctor Buck. He, I don't think Doctor Buck's gonna come in after what Liverpool's been awful. And yesterday, they, they, those two teams could have played forever and not scored a goal. Moving on. So respiratory, real quick. So uh, in this effort, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, they don't really talk a lot about the structure. You should, uh, and all the all the stuff that's here. So I don't think the anatomy, from an MCAT point of view, other than just knowing the names are important, or the fact that it's Kyle and cartilage. And, you know, what? because you, you, you go over these things. I think really it gets more relevant with regard, I mean, so there would be just, be, to me, it would be basic questions about, you know, hyaline cartilage, uh, where 
you know, maybe the areas where bronchioles can become congested with certain diseases or go into spasm with allergic phenomena like anaphylactic shock. I mean, but they're going to talk more about what goes on at the alveoli, the role of the surfactant, why that's so important. I think all of those are part of it. The anatomical nuances of, you know, the, uh, the eustachian tube being more horizontal in babies, maybe they'll have a thought about that, why it predisposes people to ear infections. The fact that the right main bronchus declinates more because, it's, because the left one has to go over the heart, maybe that would be something that would be in there from a structural perspective, I would think. And, you know, and it, again, I don't know that it's, it's, just, it's not controversial, but it's not consistent. What makes upper and lower respiratory? I think what makes conductive and exchange. So remember, with respiratory, you have basically the functional divisions. I think the focus point will be more in physiology. It's more about the conductive division is really until you get close enough to the alveoli that diffusion can take over. And by definition, that involves the transition point between the terminal bronchioles to the respiratory bronchioles. What defines a respiratory bronchial is it starts to open up directly into alveoli for exchange. At that point, you're subdued. The air, the, the oxygen carbon dioxide factors are sufficiently closed that simple diffusion can take over. We don't have to deal with the mechanics of moving it in and out. So that's the distinction between the conduction and the conducting and the exchange or respiratory division. Maybe that's part of it. What does the nose do? You know, they, they, they mentioned that a little bit in this, you know, in this exam cracker section. And I, we'll, 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 we'll sort of scroll through it shortly. Airway for respiration, moistens, warms. So it moistens it, filters it, warms it. I think that's important. Yeah, you know, resonating chamber and olfactory receptors, fine. Fine, Dandy. I, the anatomy, I don't think of this type would be of any consequence whatsoever. You know, the different fact that there are two, uh, knowing that, again, the pseudostrat, the ciliated idea of pseudostratified ciliated is so important because of the role of this, because that's something we look at, the mucociliary escalator. It's damaged so consistently, not just by disease, but by environmental factors, certainly by smoking and those, you know, and, and other you know, pollutants and things in the environment that that's significant I think, as well. So, you know, that's why I've always, you know, whatever I tell you guys, I'm a nut for epithelia because I always think it's about basics. Whenever they do these tests, that's sort of the default. Like for, for the questions you were just doing with Dr. Hill, when you get into those passages and they're about, whether it's biochem or enzyme mechanics, and well, I, they, they, then I think it's passage dependent. And have, but even some of those questions are going to be dependent on general that are there. So there's not a whole lot where the sinuses are located and all that stuff. And the divisions of the pharynx wouldn't be a big deal because this is all anatomy. Again, the distance between the respiratory and the conducting zone, I don't need to get into anything about voice or the different, you maybe the, you know, the fact that, again, it's hyaline cartilage and the ones that are maybe I would know would be about the thyroid cartilage I don't think anything else uh, structurally trachea. No, I think not. But again, you know, the, the role of the cilia would be significant with regard. I don't think the Heimlich would be the idea of the segmentation. So understanding when you're talking about if they, those are things when they talk about bronchi, primary, secondary, tertiary, bronchioles. You know anything that's in the question that gives you a clue. As to what they're pointing at to me would be would be relevant in those, and 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 so I think that that's now, and I think that that covers that little bit of brief anatomical review that's there. Let me go over to this. So I include I sent this to you, obviously. Oop, Bob, here. So I did the best I could early this morning copying it. The truth be told, I still feel rotten. <laughs> Such a headache. Okay, so we know what it does: respiratory, oxygen, aerobic respiration. Da, 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 da. So here, the little notes I like here is 
oxygen and carbon dioxide. Like I said, and, and it's ultimate in with the good air, out with the bad. You know, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. Basic anatomy, that's what I was trying in there. They'll talk about that. The warming, moistening, cleansing it, the role of the ciliated, trapping particles. Uh, and so that's, and so you can see this interesting. Microtubules are found, etc. fallopian tubes, pendulum cells. A defect of microtubule production might have resulted in a problem with breathing, fertility, or circulation of cerebral spinal fluid. Now, that's a little note I, I didn't necessarily appreciate. That was there. I mean, with regard to cystic fibrosis, I know that's about the mucus, an overly sticky mucus. I don't know if they do would be anything more other than the, the genetic basis, and I'm pretty sure that's. Uh, I, don't that's I don't think it's sex. I think it's just autosomal dominant. I agree with about that, but that that's lookable. Those kinds of things, but my, microtubules are interesting. That might be a little interesting little nugget to keep in the back of your head. So let's see, uh, thermoregulation, regulation of body temperature plays a role with regard to that. Panting, water, et cetera, uh, they can evap, you know, so bringing in more water, the upper part of the respiratory can evaporate and evaporation is exothermic. So there's a, a cooling aspect of things. So the, like, is like human, like heavy breathing after running, is that like considered panting in humans? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So when you're when you're catching your breath, even you're like that. I mean, with any kind of exercise. I mean, I know what it feels like. I mean, I know how I adjust my respiration when I'm on a treadmill. But when I get off of that, I mean, I can feel it. I'm still trying to do that. I, believe it or not, I've been inside of a gym. I can tell. In such trouble. I mean, we had one of the, one of our former students a few years ago. So I was, that's why we could do the lab up in that the fitness center. Yeah. And I'm trying to do this respiratory or the cardiac lab up there. We didn't even have the technology. I just had these little handheld things. And she goes, oh, you know, she on the course. Well, I worked out this morning, but I can run again. <laughs> on the track, it's like, oh my God. I, I ran, I did like four miles yesterday. I'm toast right now. I said, I can't. I've done eight miles the past two days. So oh, it's just like when my kid started doing that stuff. He's, we started, well, I decided I'm going to run a marathon. He starts, oh, I, oh, I just, I did six or eight miles today. I did 10. I know. Hey, my daughter. Who would do that? My parents, for some reason, for a midlife crisis, they got a, like, a 5K kit. They just run all the 5Ks they can. Good for them. Yeah. It is what it is. I'll flood. I don't know. It's a weird thing. You know, like, I'd rather have them buy, like, a sports car or something instead of, like, we're going to run five things. Right. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. Gas exchange that's moving there. So, here, we're coming up here. I mean, you made me lose my pace. Here's the panting nugget that's there. Respiratory system, gas exchange, we know. And they talk a little bit about these rules that are important. Again, the difference between the Bohr effect and the Haldane effect, I think that's something that you should, should be very much... So there aren't a lot of names, but those are the names that are there. That are there. Nasal cavity, various structures. So the hairs and the cilia. Like I said, there's not enough like that. The pharynx, obviously, is shared. The epiglottis, obviously, plays a role of covering it. So you're familiar with that, that type of material anatomically. Can't tell anything from that from that X-ray. I mean, uh, I'd have to look better from that you know that image from the book. And again, I don't see a, a whole lot here until we finally get down into the alveolar sacs that are there. And so this is just tracing the flow. Okay, so so I mean and that's the idea. The all idea of branching of this is about it's all about surface area. And then they show you some of the things. And you saw this image on the PowerPoints that we have with regard to the type 1 and type 2 cells and all that stuff that you will see there. So it's all about pressures that are there. Okay. Enters the body in and out again. Just do, it's almost exclusively pressure related. So there's not a lot of effort. Again, the only active 
portion of breathing for us is inhaling normally, not stressfully, because we're firing the diaphragm and flattening it and the external intercostals, both of those serve to enlarge the chest cavity. And then you, and, and they even allude to it here, go right back to the good old ideal gas law. Good old PV equals NRT, you increase the volume, you're going to decrease the pressure proportionately. That creates a sufficient amount of extra gradient, because there's always a little bit, to make sure that, there's, that the lungs are inflated, and voila, it happens. Okay, when the airway and alveolar are negative pressure, air flows inwards, okay, greater than, so when that pressure, and then it flows back out again, once we increase the pressure with what's flowed in, basically, and, and obviously there's a series of controls that play along with it. So it's all of it. Their elasticity normally causes them to collapse. Okay. The combination of these effects of the pressure of the chest cavity at rest to be negative compared to atmospheric pressure. Okay. The lungs have a natural tendency to compress the ICU, but the rib cage tends to expand more outwards in the opposite direction. When you have that subtle force of the pleura and the surface tension of the moisture you know, contributes to keeping it expand, expanded. Inspiration, and again, it's, it's, it's the timer effectively is in the medulla and augmented by the pons, okay? And, and they talk about the intercostal muscles and, and be specific, they are external. We only bring the internal and then the air comes in. When the medulla stops signaling, okay, again, like a metronome, like a basic, depending on need, at that point, it relaxes, causing the chest cavity to shrink. And then, and the, the resiliency is an important factor because that elasticity is always going to be lost to some extent just by aging alone and maybe even more so under more, you know, under disease type circumstances that are there. So expiration is passive unless, and again, whether it's forced inspiration or forced expiration, okay? So the surface tension does play a role that are there. Uh, surface tension, the strong intermolecular forces of the thin layer of water covering the inner surface, that's the internal portion of the alveoli, not outwardly, but within, let's say, the lung itself, generates pressure that tends to collapse it. However, this is the idea of the surfactant. So it... it and effectively, that's the, that underscores the importance of the surfactant that's there. And so here's P, good old PVNRT sitting, sitting in there. So again, the idea of really going to pressure and reviewing what that has to say is fine. This what we did a little bit in the lab. You'll remember the idea of tidal volume that were there. And then, and then they're looking at, here they're looking at pressure changes and larger pressure changes that are there. And now you get to the gas exchange principles. This is, and it's a lot of it's about solution chemistry. So this is where I think the overlap occurs. To understand that partial pressure of gases very much acts like things dissolved in solution in chemistry and impacts it because so it creates its own gradient. More so than anything else. The tendency of gas travels toward area of lower concentration or pressure. And so they're giving you a description. So we know the air, roughly 80-20. Okay, remember type M planet, Star Trek? Yeah. I'm not enamored with the new Picard this last season of it. You're not liking it? No, I haven't liked any of it. It's, it's like they, they, they did this purely so they could give everybody another tour de force. So anybody who has ever did anything in the show Makes an appearance oh, okay. of note. And they had to bring in shapeshifters. And I, I love DS9 was my favorite story arc of all those. Brilliant story arc when they put that together. Loved it. Yeah. So is, is Picard your favorite? Of the characters? Yeah. I don't know. I, th I, think, he, I think he portrayed the role the best. I... I I, I tend to like offbeat characters okay. a little bit more than others that are there. So I, I, it, 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 it's interesting in, in, in that regard. 
Dwarf's a little too macho for me. I love Klingons. I kind of like Ferengi. Okay. I mean, Armin Shimmerman, just wonderful. There's a really good episode when they do a, uh, it's like a, they're creating like a flashback episode to the 50s in, in one of the DS9 arcs where he's like in Harlem and playing a character and a writer and sci-fi stuff. And you see all of them out of costume. I saw them speak a couple of times. You know, I saw uh, Sid Bashir, you know, uh, uh, who plays who plays the, the doctor in that, and Alexander Siddig, and he's because he was married to the to the lady who played uh, uh, he, the Bajoran Colonel, whose name escapes me at the tip of my tongue. So we used to go to all the Star Trek conventions and stuff. Bless you. I like that. And there, here we are. So eighty twenty exhaled air. Obviously, less oxygen, and look at the increase in carbon dioxide, and there's trace gases. So, they look at the partial pressures, okay? So, inside the lungs, they look at the deoxygenated blood contains in its pulmonary capillaries 40 and the PCO2. So, understand, this is a big factor. Oxygen has a very large concentration gradient. So, approximately 110 to 40, it's going to move. 46 to 40 outward for carbon dioxide, not a big deal. So the reason that they move equally is solubility. There's a lot of factors that impact simple diffusion because you're going through a membrane. One of them is the ability to get, is the solubility within the membrane. That's what equalizes it from a molecular basis. So the difference between them causes the change, but understand the underlying factor that are there. Meanwhile, because the blood is transported carbon dioxide cells waste it has a high partial pressure compared as a result it diffuses remember these molecules passively through the membrane so and i it was this is not a name i was familiar with so i started doing this this fixed law okay the diffusion is directly proportional to the surface area and differential partial pressure across the membrane is inversely proportional to the thickness okay so that makes sense so how much surface area and what the pressures are okay and the, the beauty of these membranes anatomically and to me that's a take-home point is you're sharing a basement membrane with simple squamous we effectively membrane on each side so there's very very little in between the two cell membranes whether it's alveolar cell or the membrane of the capillary that's there so it's, it's a relatively easy crossover okay and so I think that that's part of it. They don't mention here the solubility coefficient, but I think, you know, that's a, that's a nuance that I think you need to be familiar with. Once oxygen is diffused in blood vessel memories, the amount of gas that can be dissolved in the blood, that's Henry's law. And then that's that amount of gas can be dissolved and so it's directly proportional to partial gas pressure, blah, 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 blah. So Henry's law is more of a, more of a sort of a generic law that we're applying in this particular instance. So, facilitates the dissolution of oxygen in the blood as described. Since the side of oxygen in the blood is not nearly high enough for sufficient oxygen to be dissolved for transport, the majority of oxygen is transported by hemoglobin. And that was an interesting nuance. Is that it's, it's not like magically it's going to go into solution. Some of the carbon dioxide is a very small amount of oxygen is able to do that. That's where the hemoglobin comes in, and particularly the heme molecule. So now we have a landing pad, so to speak. Okay, 98%, and this is where, and if there's one thing to know out of this whole unit, it's that hemoglobin disassociation curve. Backwards, forwards, around, and through. What happens at temperature, what happens at pH, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so obviously reversible. We know about the four polypeptides and the heme factors. Iron in the center, blah, 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 blah. So, release, so when any one of the iron atoms binds, oxygenation of the heme groups is accelerated. That's what creates this S curve. It's a regular curve, nonlinear curve. When one binds, it, the others become more attracted. When one releases, they become less attracted. I mean, it's sort of fascinating. And 
there's a question on one of our, I don't think you had that, you'll probably get it on the vinyl, where it compares myoglobin, which is a little bit different. I think myoglobin holds on a little bit longer. So, the, and, it, and it obviously it's due to the structural differences, but the myoglobin is a little bit more, maybe a little bit more like fetal hemoglobin, I think, as I recall. So, so they call, and they refer to this, and that's the name they use. I don't know that we use that name as commonly, but I would stick it in my memory of a cooperativity. What I like to call kindergarten skills. Cheering? You're awful. So, percent of hemoglobin bound, that's the curve. And this was interesting. Hemoglobin is not an enzyme, but they it's this Michaelis mentin enzyme curve. That's not my word. That's hers. She's all McCallus men, Doctor, right? That's her thing. We even I, we have they did mention the shot Lier's principle in this. I love that. You know, which way you push the I love that. Yeah, so it, it in state of the enzyme cal increases with increasing concentration, then levels off, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's kind of what happens here. The oxygen saturation, the flat portion of the curve, very, very small, as long as we're just doing regular air. So, and that's what they're looking at. However, the shape of the curve is impacted by the cooperativity, which causes the affinity to increase as it binds and to decrease as it, so to speak, as it unbinds. Okay. Just the presence of competitors of other types of influence thing. So the oxygen saturation depends on, these are the ones that you should know, be familiar with, carbon dioxide and because carbon dioxide, because of what it does with water, it impacts the pH and increases the amount of acidity and temperature as well. They call it a rightward shift, which basically means going to, I, the way I view it is unloading faster. Hydrogen ion concentration or temperature, which occurs in response to Increase CO2, increase hydrogen ions, increase temperature. Reflects hemoglobin's lowered affinity, and it moves it off. Okay? That is there. When the shift is due to increased hydrogen ion concentration, that's the Bohr effect. So it's going to accelerate the unloading in areas which have lower oxygen and, by implication, higher carbon dioxide. And the Haldane effect is the opposite. That's the ability for the carbon dioxide to unload in the lung. So please remember that. If nothing else, remember that for the exam that most of you are taking. Okay. So th I think that's important. So carbon dioxide hydrogen ions affect the oxygen curve, allosteric effects. They bind to deoxygenate hemoglobin. Allosteric means they don't bind right on the hemoglobin. Okay, and then don't forget that 2,3-DPG, what is that, the diphosphoglycerate? Okay, that is a, that also does the same thing, and it's produced greater in low oxygen environments. So that's another sort of take-home factor. And so they're showing, so here's that myoglobin, it just holds on to it better until it really lowers significantly in hemoglobin, and you can see what happens with the shifts, how it unloads even faster. Yeah, we'll leave it here. And if I can think of anything else to add to it, also, because this is just the, you know, the bicarbonic acid buffer system, Le Chatelier. They talk about the chloride shift. So remember, bicarbonate, what, what that does, bicarbonate is brought in with the carbon dioxide, and you have an increasing amount of that. But what happens is, in order to balance that out, with it, within the, effectively, the chloride moves into the plasma, the bicarbonate staying inside and they and it reverses the process in the lungs and they and they demonstrate that pretty well and there's the haldane effect and and, and basically that right, good happy dance goodbye oh you're staying